Right, hello, welcome to today's session. Okay, what we're going to be looking at is a rice round fish. We've got here on the board, if I can stand that up. This is a freshwater trout. Okay, it's a nice large fish. Um, lovely pink flesh. Quality points of this, obviously, should be able to feel that. Nice, firm flesh on it. If you can't see my hand there, I'll put it to the camera. It's not slimy. I mean, I've got a little bit of moisture from the fish, but it's not slimy. Um, it's nice and clear. Looking at the eyes, the eyes need to be clear. They're not glazed. Inside the gills, we're looking for a nice pink gill, which is there. Um, this has actually been gutted by the fishmonger. I've got a nice clean cavity in there as well. I'm look overlooking, making sure that there's no damage on the outside of it. That all looks good to me. Now that is a, that's a standard for, for any fish that you're looking for. Um, visual inspection is very important. I'm looking at the fins as well. There's no damage on those. So I'm very happy with that. Um, what we need to do with this in preparing it. Now today the dish I'm going to be looking at doing with this. I'm going to steam this on papillot. So I'm going to set you something to have a look at that because that is a classical French um, st method of cookery uh, and I want you to look at that further. So I'm not going to give too much away about that um, but the dish I'm going to do, I'm going to steam it with some lovely fresh seasonal asparagus. I've got some mushrooms, potatoes and tomatoes so that's what you're going to do in your session today. Um, I'm going to do it with a nice fillet. Well, it will be a supreme from the fillet because it's so large. Um, so I'm going to do it with a boneless piece. But what I do want to demonstrate with you, and when I get this prepared, I'm going to do it, take a cut off, which is known as a darn. And the darn incorporates some of the bone of the fish. Um, that will become more apparent when I do that. So in preparing this fish, the first thing we need to do is we need to scale it. All fish on the outside have waterproof scales on it. Now the fishmonger, although I tried to get one which hadn't been scaled, the fishmonger's actually scaled this, but the process of doing it, and it is quite messy, so you'd probably want to do it under running water. So a nice clean sink, running water, and all you do when you're descaling it from the tail, back of the knife, not the blade, because you don't want to cut through it, you literally just scrape it down. I'll see if there's any scales which will come off this. I've got a couple coming off. But all in all, the fishmonger's done quite a good job on that. And if I can show you on the knife there. Alright, now they're very... They look like little bits of round plastic. They need to come off because you don't really want that in your food. Okay, they're, they're quite crunchy. Um, I'm saying you don't want it in the food. We had a guest chef in Chef's Academy, um, not last year, but the year before, uh, Dave Coulson from Peace and Love. Fantastic chef. And he actually utilised the fish scales from the dish he was making. And he effectively made a little crumble to garnish his dish. So he utilised everything off there. Just something. Peace and love. Have a look at the menus online. So, to prepare this, these are quite sharp, by the way. Be careful. If you t touch these the wrong way and you catch as your finger, they're like little needles. So, watch these. But, with the fins, you can take your scissors and cut these off. This makes it easier preparation. When you're filleting the fish so all of those off you've got the back one you've got the rear one you got I believe the front fins now they're on either side you've got some belly fins as well they need to come off don't worry about the tail because you actually need something to hold on to when you're prepping this so just leave the tail on All of those off. There we go. And 
I'm going to remove the head. Now, you don't want to see a lot of wastage on the head, but if you feel around here, just behind the gill, you can feel the bone. It's like the natural bone line that goes along there. You're going to take your knife and you're just going to cut straight through there. Now you're going to cut through the backbone so you are going to hear a crunch. And the head should come off nice and clean. There's a little bit of flesh in there. Not too much though. I haven't wasted too much because it only goes to there. So I haven't wasted too much. But if you wanted to, they could come out. There's a little bit of fish trimmings. You can use that in fish cakes, for example. Well, that gives you one fillet on this side and this fillet on that side. This here is effectively the backbone and that's what allows the fish to move when it's in the water. And that backbone runs right along. The idea is we're going to take this fillet off this side and we're going to take this fillet off this side. But what I do want to show you, and I'm just going to take one slice off. Now, good rule of thumb is about one inch slice for a fish this size. Obviously, if it was a larger salmon, uh, you may not take this thickness off. But for this size, a nice portion, uh, a six to eight ounce portion, I would say. I'm going to take one slice off. So I'm almost just straight through the fish. Make sure I get through that skin on the other side. And that there, I'll trim these off on the bottom, but that there is called a darn. And what that incorporates is, it incorporates the bone, so when that's getting cooked, you're getting flavour out of the bone, imparted into the fillets on either side. And that there is a lovely darn. Like I say, I'll trim that off, just because we've got a little bit of belly on there, which is quite fatty. But again, those trimmings there could be utilised in a fish cake. But that there is your darn of trout. The darn is the cut. So the fish doesn't matter. It could be a darn of salmon. could be a darn of cod. Any round fish, that is a darn. Okay, so I'll put that to one side for now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the fillet. So this top bit here, I'm going to remove this from the backbone. Now you can see the belly is already removed until I get to the tail section. So I'm going to take that off. Filleting knife, because I'm running it along the top of the bone here. So I'm going to use my filleting knife, very, very similar um, to what you would do on a sirloin. So along the top, now you can see this is where I've removed the original fin. I'm just going to cut to one side of it and I'm going to take my knife down to the backbone. All the way to the tail. Now you can hear that. What I'm going to do then is going to cut through and you'll hear the little breaking of bones these are called pin bones and that's perfectly natural you're breaking all the way down I'm gonna go down to the tail one fillet off. Still needs some preparation to it but that's fine I'll come back to that in a moment. I'm going to turn this over so I'm on the flat side of the fish now and I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to do it from the tail. I'm going to take it up and this is why I've left the tail on so I've got something to hold on to. And I'm going to keep my knife as close to the bone as I possibly can. And you'll hear the snapping of the bones again. It's 
so that's come off very thin relatively clean again a knife down here would remove this and those scraps there could go into fish cake or something like that now personally I wouldn't tend to use trout bones for a stock because they're an oily fish um, and they will make an oily stock that's not to say you can't um, if you for example if you were making a stock to go with a trout dish then that would be fine but for a white fish stock obviously it's not white I personally wouldn't use it so to remove the pin bones filleting knife again I'm going to take them down and remove the bones into the belly As you can see there's a little bit of wastage on there but I've removed those bones from there and do the same for this a little higher up one of the things and it's my personal preference when I'm eating fish if I get a bone I tend to be put off now the preparation um, that shows the skill of the chef so if the preparation is not there and your fish is full of bones and um, that's down to you guys so take your time and get it right now I'm going to trim this you can see if I lay that to the camera there you can see that there is a natural line if I follow this line here then where my knife is lying is where I want to trim it and what I'm doing is removing the belly of the trout but that leaves me a nice clean even line I'm going to do the same with this side now there are some bones on here I don't know if your camera's picking that up, but there are bones here. I'm going to take my knife on the inside of those bones to remove those off. They are where the top fin was, so they're, they're supporting the fin. And I'm just going to take that and cut those off. And what I'm doing is I'm removing those bones in one go. So I've got a nice clean fillet there. What I am left with, and I come back to my filleting knife here, I've got some pin bones down here. Bring that closer to the camera so you can see those there we go yeah you see those bones sticking out there they need to be removed so I've got rid of the bones on the top I've got rid of the bones on the bottom I've got the pin bones in the center some tweezers or some clean pliers and we need to pull these out now these get pulled the direction that the bone is lying if you try and pull them out the wrong way you'll end up ripping the flesh so Comes out like that. They come out fairly easy. Just need to get a good grip of them. little hint you may have got rid of them at the top feel down the side where you've cut through because I guarantee you there'll be some bones lying in there and there is so we'll just get rid of those as well like I've already said this is the mark of a competent chef making sure that all the bones are out of the fish Accidents happen, but if you're doing everything you can to ensure, at least then you can say, well, you know, I, I didn't realise it was a mistake, rather than being lazy. But we're professionals, so mistakes shouldn't be happening. Sometimes you will get the odd bone that doesn't want to come out. Clean your tweezers, and then get back in for it. Don't just leave it. Because that will be the bone that the customer chokes on. Something you can look at is consequences to fish bones. 
many a restaurant has been sued because of fish bones and what you'll find on menus there'll be a little disclaimer saying produce may contain bones or small bones um, may be present in our dishes but that doesn't negate that doesn't take away from the fact that the chef should be checking all this so I'm running my finger from top to bottom and I'm happy I cannot feel any more bones. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So what we've got there is a lovely clean fillet of sea trout. Sorry, not sea trout, uh, freshwater trout. Okay, I'll do the same with this other fillet. And once we've got those done, uh, we can then portion it. And I'll show you how to portion it when we come back to the video. Um, in a few minutes. I'll see you soon.